Hi, I'm Ed from Up for Motor Services, and we're back again recording some more content with Professional Motor Mechanic Magazine. And this time we're with Elta talking all things mass airflow sensors. If you're enjoying the YouTube channel, then please subscribe and so you can see more videos. Right, let's get into it. Mass airflow sensors, it's a big topic. Um, we're going to talk today about kind of best practices, diagnosis, general pitfalls with them. But first things first, we need to know what it is and how it works. So, mass airflow sensors. Basically, it does what it says on the tin. They detect the amount of air that's taken in through the intake and that's going into the engine at any one time. There's two types, there's hot wire and there's hot film. Um, the hot wire is generally on the older vehicles. The hot film is generally on newer vehicles, but all it does is it detects the amount of air going past, it cools down the sensor, and then it sends a signal back to the engine ECU to tell the ECU how much air is going into that engine so it can inject the right amount of petrol and diesel. They do get a little bit more complicated than that, especially on the modern vehicles, because they're used for detecting where the EGRs are opening and closing, even down to something like a DPF blocked. We've had where a DPF's been blocked and it throws an air mass sensor on it because obviously it can't push the right amount of air through the engine. So there's a lot of things that the mass airflow sensor data is used for and to keep the engine running exactly how it should be and this is what we see a lot is we see a lot of mass airflow sensors fitted to vehicles just because a fault code is thrown up it might not be that it might be something else that's causing that mass airflow sensor fault code to come up it might be too high too low because there's not enough air going through the system so this leads me perfectly onto my next subject a good diagnosis so something i've banged on about previous videos is a good diagnosis. It's the first thing you need to get right before putting any part on a car. And one of the most misdiagnosed things we see is mass airflow sensors. First things first, you need to get the symptoms from the customers, you need to get a good description from them, and then the next thing is a full code read. But that's not the be all and end all. Read the full code. If it's a mass airflow sensor fault code, that's not just means throw a sensor at it. We've had loads of times where the fault code has been the mass airflow sensor and probably 90% of the time it's not a mass airflow sensor, it's something else causing it to be or to flag that fault code. So first things first, I would check for air leaks. So smoke detectors are a brilliant bit of kit. They can show any, pretty much any air leak on a vehicle when used correctly. Next thing is, is just looking at the live data. Is the EGR open and closing correctly when it's meant to be? Is the DPF fill up? Is there something else you're missing on the vehicle? And just a general state of the engine, because if it is a car that hasn't been serviced that much and it's full of carbon and, horrible, and it's horrible like that, it may well be flagging up the mass airflow sensor. So, but also you can scope the sensor, make sure it's working correctly. So there's plenty of stuff you can do before just throwing a sensor at it. Another great example is always, as I said, check the servicing of the vehicle because we've had plenty of airflow sensors, full codes thrown up because of blocked air filters. And even on some of the Mercedes, you actually have to reset an air filter service thing inside the diagnostic platform to let it know that the air filter has been changed. So make sure you check that before you throw an airflow sensor at it. So Elta have kindly provided us with two different type of airflow meters. So this one is a kind of traditional one that we always see. Um, they're pretty simple. They normally just bolt in just after the air intake. Um, most important things on these when fitting them is one, check the plug, check the plug on the actual end of the wiring loom, make sure all the pins are okay and everything's connected in there properly. Um, and, but the one we always see is the arrow. Make sure you fit it the right way around. The amount of times we see them fit the wrong way around, it causes no end of problems, and you end up firing a bit more of the parts cannon at it, trying to fix it, so make sure. And they've always got the arrow pointing in the direction on the majority of mass airflow sensors. Another feature on a lot of mass airflow sensors is they have inbuilt into them the air temperature sensor. So it obviously just detects in the temperature of the air coming into the engine because that makes a big difference on the amount of fuel or diesel or petrol that will be injected into the car. So yeah, you sometimes flag up fault codes for these. So it's worth checking whether they're inbuilt into these because some of them are, some of them aren't. So the second common mass airflow sensor is this little one here. It's a bit like a little cartridge. These are really simple to install. They normally bolt, and in this case, just on the air, just after the air box. Um, two screws, once again, check the connectors, all okay and all the pins going into it are all good. But as I say, it's just undo the two bolts. It slides in, it can only tend to go around one way, so you cannot get it wrong. Um, bolt it up, 
connect it back up, and it's as simple as that. Also, after fitment, it's always worth just checking on your diagnostic platform, whichever one you're using, is that you don't have to reset the parameters. I mean, I would, just as a, a caution, is reset any parameters anyway, but some of them do actually have mass airflow sensor recalibrations and resets, so make sure you check that, because it will then reset the parameters and then take it on a good road test afterwards. Mass airflow sensors are so commonly misdiagnosed. Um, we see it very regularly, um, it's quite, usual in our workshop to see this when they've come to us from other places. One of the examples was a BMW that we had in a quite well, a few weeks ago, um, mass airflow sensor full code. Um, it had pretty much every single brand of mass airflow sensor fitted to it, but it was still flagging the same full code. Um, came to us and after our diagnosis, well, diagnostic procedure, we found out that it was a DPF fault. And all that simply happened was the DPF was fully blocked and it wasn't able to push the air through the engine and it backed up all the way to mass airflow sensor. So yes, it was doing its job, it was detecting the airflow wasn't correct, but it's because the airflow was correct all the way down the line to the DPF. Another prime example is Land Rover Discoveries. They have normally two of these fitted, A and B, because they have two, well they're a V engine aren't they, so they have two air intakes. Um, and the common thing we see with them is putting the wrong one. So they normally tell you A or B, and normally what we see is it might be a full code for A, but they replace B and then you still have the same problem. So make sure a correct diagnosis before fitting one of these. Another pitfall we see is substandard parts. It is well worth picking a brand you trust when fitting any, well, anything on a vehicle these days, but especially sensors. I've had it so many times where vehicles come in and it's had some really cheap, nasty, horrible sensor fitted to the vehicle and it's still flagging the same. And if anything, it actually flags other full codes, which can lead you down a completely different garden path. So make sure you pick a brand you trust. We've been fitting Elta's products for many years, be it the Elta products, their VX Pro and their Lucas range. They're a British brand, um, which is always nice these days. A lot of their stuff comes with a five year no quibble warranty. And what I love about it is we've had no problems with fitment, we've had barely any comebacks. And even if we do, their technical support is really good as well. So yeah, if, I would really recommend just choosing a product that you can really trust and you know is gonna sort the problem out in your car. Right, so a quick recap and in summary of everything that we've been over today. So first things first, make sure you have a good diagnosis. Probably the most important thing of the whole lot is diagnosing it correctly. Second thing is taking a kind of whole picture of the car. Don't just put your blinkers on. As soon as you see that fault code, there's an airflow meter, don't just go straight into that. Make sure you look at the whole vehicle, all the things like EGRs, DPFs, cracked boost pipes, anything like that. Make sure you check it before firing one of these at the car. Third thing is correct fitment. Although they look very simple, just make sure they're fitted correctly. Make sure all the pins and connections are all good and make sure the wiring's all good. But also, most importantly, take note of the arrow point it to which way the air's going, and you won't have any problem. And fourth thing is make sure you choose a brand that you can trust. Make sure it's a quality product, just like Elta, a nice British brand. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If, I hope you've taken something away from it and learned something about mass airflow sensors and their diagnosis. If you want some more information on Elta's products, then click the link below. I'll see you on the next one.